seems legit. Hello Legitimates and welcome back to my channel. Today I am making some Christmas themed decorations with my new Algo laser. Um, I wanted to do one cutting and one engraving video just to show you how they all work. So let's go. I did build this off camera. Um, I move around a lot and I have things to do so I don't do building videos but this is the first time that I have turned it on so I'm selecting English which is the default which is awesome and then we are going to put in our Wi-Fi password and then it's gonna connect this took a minute and then it didn't actually work so I do it again and then it works the second time so it'll cut out the video here and then so this is what you get once it has actually connected i'm not sure why my wi-fi is weird but anyway so this is what we get and it's automatically going to the home which is set to the front left which i also appreciate it's quite out of the way um if we click on in in here it actually has some built-in options that you could make in the machine so you could just build something without even attaching it to a computer but that's not what I'm going to do. Um, you also have to let it know if you have the 10 or 20 watt mode. Um, so I am, oh, I just knocked the camera. So again, we're going to fix that. I moved it back a bit because obviously it was getting in my way. And we are going to select the 10 watt camera. Uh, not camera, laser, sorry. And there it goes. It just needed a second. And so then you can pick one of the designs. You just click next and you can start lasering if you want. Now I'm going to connect it to my computer. So I'm in Lightburn. How I got it up was I just clicked find my laser and plugged it into a USB port. And that's all I had to do. And it just kind of automated and did everything else all by itself, which I actually really appreciated. It was very, very easy. I would now like to do a test cut. So I'm just going to draw a basic circle. You could also do a square if you were worried about corners. I usually am more worried about the circles um, because if anything's loose and I didn't build it properly, then the circle will be slightly not circular. It'll be off center. So I'm going to set it to three millimeters per second at 100% power. And I'm going to do two passes. And then I'm just going to use this piece of scrap um, you can see there, it's actually set to absolute coordinates. So if I hit home and then place it, I'll be able to do it over and over and over in case it didn't work. Um, I'm also inside, which is not great for the smoke factor, but I do have my fan overhead on high and all the doors open because it is a bit too hot outside to be out in the sunshine. I don't wish to get sunburned today. Um, but as you can see, it's burning quite nicely. There's not an insane amount of smoke, which I appreciate. Um, and it's just, it looks like it's not moving very far, but it is because I did do such a small circle. But I do find that this laser worked really, really well. I've also grabbed one of my honeycombs to lift it up. It stops the laser burn on the underneath side. So if you don't have a honeycomb, I have in the past also used cooling racks for baking because they are much easier to find locally. Uh, so it's all done. And then, so I've just hit home and that's why it went all the way to the corner. And you can see there, it cut it out beautifully. So let's go into some engraving. I got this from Kmart. It is a sleigh charcuterie board, which I thought was amazing. So I'm just going to undo all of the screws here and because it is too tall to sit under the laser. Uh, I dropped the camera there, so we just had to reposition. It fell out of its holder. My holder's on the way out, which is annoying because this is my favorite one I've found so far. So I'm just going to undo all four screws. If you have a drill, obviously that would be quicker, but hand screwing also just works fine. And then you want to make sure that you're going to put it back the way it was. So we're going to flip it over. And that's the way I want the wording. So I'm just going to pop it under the laser and then I'm going to hit home. I've already designed something on the program. This is not about the program. This video is about the laser. Um, so I'm just going to set it up with the height. So we unscrew these two bits here and it comes with a little adjustment foot, as you can see here. And we just line it up. And so then the, the laser drops and sits on top of it. And that is the perfect height that it needs. So you just need to keep this thing handy 
and you do up both of the screws to make sure that it won't shift when you pull it out and then it is all set up and ready to go. I like to keep it handy off to the side. Um, you could also drill a hole in the top and physically attach it to the front of the laser so you don't lose it if you're prone to lose items. This is now centering it up and as you can see it is not very center. So I'm going to move this because it's got absolute coordinates. That's why I'm moving the uh, material and not the actual laser. Because then if I do it the first time and it's not a deep enough engrave, it will then engrave in exactly the same spot a second time. So I just like to keep moving it around. I'm still not quite happy. I will move it a little bit more. I want it right in the middle of the board. Um, this has been sped up to 100 times the normal speed just because otherwise we'd be here for a while. And I did notice that Lightburn kind of jumped all over the place because it did the D and then not the AY and that freaked me out a little bit. But it all worked out. I have slowed down the laser for this last little bit just so that you can see in real time how fast it actually engraves. So this was set to 50 millimeters per second and with 50% power. So you can see it gets quicker as it gets shorter and shorter. Um, but the engraving looks really, really nice. You will have a little bit of soot that you need to wipe off later, but let's move on to the cutting. So this design I found online. There was a website selling it for a dollar, and I thought it was really, really cool. Uh, so again, we're going to set up the height correctly. So I've brought back the... Uh, honeycomb and this is a scrap of wood even though it's a hexagon it was out of a different project so I'm just going to set the height and then I will set it to home and line it all up the lining up took ages so I skipped it out of the video hexagons are hard to line up but you can see here it's just doing multiple passes and again I sped it up really really fast um it cut beautifully. I forgot to take a photo of how it just lifted off. And then I've also painted it off camera because you don't need to watch me do spray paint. You probably don't really need to watch me screw this back together either. But here we are doing it anyway. Um, one thing that I would also do with a charcuterie board is I would cover it in a food grade safe oil or a wax or whatever you prefer. Bunning sells a few different options. I use what's called tongue oil. Uh, I like it. It's easy to apply. You just get a rag of some description. I personally like to use microfiber cloths. I put a little tiny bit on the cloth and then I rub it in circles. It will both remove the excess soot from the engraving as well as make the board really, really nice. So that's what I use. Um, but you can also get like a wax. You can do a wax and an oil. You could do a beeswax. Anything that's food safe if you're planning on using it for food. If you are not going to use food, you could also just spray it with clear coat gloss. If it was something more decorative and less functional for you. But I just, when I saw this, I absolutely had to have it. And Slail Day is a quite modern saying. It's very on trend if you wanted to make these to sell uh, but that's pretty much it I like how dark the engraving is but that's a lot to do with the type of wood that I've used so this was three mil ply board which I also forgot to tell you and Gorilla Glue is my new favorite wood glue of the universe um, I just accidentally pulled the lid off off camera there I pulled too hard I have done that several times I'm not used to the lid just lifting so easily so we're just gonna put a little bit of glue on the back. Uh, this is quite tacky. I find it tackier than PVA glue, which is good. Uh, so I'm just going to dab a little bit on. I've also got a little blue paintbrush off to the side. I find that spreading it around with the paintbrush helps uh, so it doesn't ooze out as much. You just want like a thin layer of glue. And then I always position with this I set it up the first time off camera just to see how it would all go together and I found that positioning the hands first was the easiest way to do it. Um, I would have thought doing the, the love heart in the center and work my way out but the hands are the fiddliest part so I like to place them down first. And again you just want to make sure that you've got glue all over it just to make sure it's not going to lift or shift or crack or just anything bad. Just a little bit of glue. 
You can also get a scrap of wood or plastic and squirt the glue out and paint all of it on if that's more your preference. I'm finding that this works pretty well as is though, so I'm just... If I was doing these in bulk, I would probably have like a, a container of glue and dip the paintbrush in. But no. For one project, just putting it straight on the back has been working for me. Um, and I also like the Gorilla Glue because it's got a flat nozzle instead of a round one. So it's actually easier to spread the glue out, in my opinion. I'm also doing everything synchronized just to make sure that I don't skip or miss anywhere. You don't have to do it this way, obviously. You build them however you want. But I really liked this laser. I actually did it quite quick. I like a 10 watt laser for cutting and engraving. Mainly just the three ply wood. I'm not big on cutting thicker wood. I don't have a lot of projects that need it. I'm all about dainty little things as you can see here. As far as lasers go, I think this one worked out really, really well. It's a great little 10 watt laser. So if you're in the market for one, I do recommend this one. It cut things out beautifully for me. Anyway guys, until next time, I will see you in the next video. Bye!